Sometimes videos just uh, kind of come up as a reaction to something. And uh, as many of you know, I did spend uh, a decent amount of time in Korea many years ago, South Korea, pardon me. And I uh, am subscribed to some people still residing there. Uh, and I'm going to post this as a video response to this particular gentleman I'm subscribed to. Uh, he may or may not res uh, accept it as a response. But uh, there is a report, and you can see it in the link, and I urge you to watch it. There are subtitles uh, where foreigners, particularly foreign men, are decried as uh, criminal and what have you. Now, this foreign issue has been ongoing. Uh, in the days of yore, when I still lived in South Korea, it was an issue back then. And so this is nothing new under the sun, as it were. But I think the ensuing discussion that has come about as a result, this idea of <clears throat> xenophobia and uh, anti, uh, anti foreignism, if uh, you can accept that neologism, is a, is a false interpretation, the incorrect analysis of what's actually been going on, what's, what's described in the, the uh, snippet of video and so on and so forth. You see, the trained eye, the trained eye can recognize what's really going on here. Notice it's, it's foreign men. Now, there's no doubt that this is a form of, well, a, a kind of a subtle form of misandry, but I think it's much more a manifestation, I saw it when I was living in South Korea, of uh, inter-male uh, dominance hierarchy competition, and namely that Korean men are very upset that they are losing, uh, quote-unquote, their women uh, to foreigners for whatever reason. Um, I'm not going to try to delve into the reasons why foreign males t seem, uh, on the whole, or uh, there's a trend, be more appealing to Korean women, but um, for whatever reason, some significant subset of Korean females uh, have, have an interest and have taken interest in foreign men, primarily uh, white Anglo-Saxon men, or men of, of, Anglo, of, uh, of cultural and linguistic Anglo-Saxon uh, background. And uh, to me, I think I have a trained eye with regards to these things. I look at the video and I don't see so much as an issue of xenophobia or racism or as, as the gentleman who, who presents, we've seen many comments, it's much more of an issue of, uh, well, c kind of misandry, but it's much more of an issue of, of really uh, kind of jealousy, if you will, and, and I don't think it's a good thing. I mean, everyone who knows me knows how much I think intramale dominance hierarchy competition is, uh, is, is bunk and, and really bad for all men. But you see this is primarily a projection, a projection of, of jealousy arising from that uh, sentiment of competition from Korean men towards foreign men, and women somehow are innocent. Never mind the fact that the women in the videos and elsewhere have freely chosen to enter into relationships with foreign men, whatever those consequences might be. Um, and uh, once again, and you see in the video, they're given more or less a free pass. They usually are. I'm, I'm always interested in um, men's issues beyond the scope of the Anglosphere, as I call it, because I think men's issues encompass the globe. I think uh, male disposability in particular and perception of the male as valueless is something that, well, basically uh, shot through all cultures and societies. So when I see this, I, I feel that it's important to address it as well. Now, my evidence uh, to suggest that this is not merely a manifestation of xenophobia or racism uh, because we don't, there's not much PCism that that uh, that goes on in South Korea, is the simple fact that there are many many foreigners from the Philippines, Southeast Asia, and elsewhere that come to Korea to work low-paying jobs, and uh, of course they're looked down upon. But no one's creating TV reports about them. No one is uh, on this massive scale. No one is uh, going out of their way to. Uh, besmirch them or to say, oh, they're, they're a danger to Korean society or they're uh, all-carrying all infectious diseases. Uh, the, the HIV thing is a bit of a puzzle to me since to get a job in Korea as a foreigner, you need to pay pass an HIV test. So uh, I don't really get that. But 
who knows? I mean, there are there are a lot of uh, false, I believe, cooked cooked ideas and cooked numbers in this report. So there aren't any numbers presented, but whatever they're referring to, I think it's been cooked up. But yeah, so you see this very clearly. This is not it's not xenophobia so much as a, a manifestation of uh, intermale dominance hierarchy competition, wherein the Korean males and I saw this with live with my own eyes feel resentment and jealousy towards foreign men because foreign men are seen as acquiring the women. Now, as we know from Brieffo's law, it is the female who decides whether or not to enter into a so quote-unquote relationship or alliance with a male. That means that these women are freely choosing to enter into these relationships. And uh, by and large, based on my observations, most foreign men involved cream treat them as utter princesses. I mean, Korean women, by and large, expect to be treated like princesses. Um, they're much less... Uh, you won't get the typical feminist streak with them, but they certainly have these expectations that they are to be waited on hand and foot. You are to give in to their demands immediately and so on and so, so forth. In, in, a, in a very subtle and yet, well, it's very difficult to describe, different way to, say, a Western female. So, uh, of course, the report's not going to include those men. Now, of course, I would never approve of men doting on females and serving their every women need. But the, I, I mentioned this just as an example that uh, the report is, well, biased to say the least. But it really does, and I think we see this, take a trained eye to see what's really going on here. That if, if it really were an issue of xenophobia, then... I don't, I'm, I try to keep abreast to some extent of stuff going on in South Korea. We would see constant reports, and there are a lot of these, of the sort, the sort that I'm linking to, about uh, Cambodians and, and Filipino folk and, and everything you could imagine, uh, primarily from the Southeast Asia uh, area of the world. And they would be regarded as dangerous and what have you. But they, they tend to work low-paying jobs. They tend not to be integrating Korean society, and they, they tend not to be... Uh, accepted um, by Korean women. Go figure. Hypergamy 101. I think foreign males uh, project perhaps the illusion of higher status than Korean men and perhaps women uh, in Korea have some perception that the rules are somewhat different. Uh, I mean let, let's face it, South Korea is a very conservative society still. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in these this controversy about controversy about intimacy in public. I mean, that's just something that's uh, frowned upon in South Korea. But um, you know, I, I really just see this very clearly as an, a, a issue that really has very little to do with foreigners per se, and more to do with the other. It's the other guy taking my woman. This is where it's all stemming from. Um, yes, you have some women who will join into the. Uh, the, uh, the the argument and, say, and and that is a manifestation of cultural pride, but the level of resentment uh, towards foreign men in in Korea most that most of them not all of them but I have met some rather disgusting individuals in my time when I was living there they behave behave themselves and they behave quite well. And uh, those who have relationships uh, dote on their females and provide for every whim and need, you know, the usual uh, subservient male role. So I don't really see this uh, as, a, as an issue regarding foreigners so much as an issue regarding uh, men getting upset, upset at other men. Now imagine, if you can, a world where, well, that none of this w was the case, where men would stop competing with each other for the attentions of females. Now, it's not going to happen, certainly not in my lifetime, and probably not in the lifetime of those uh, um, a millennium hence. But imagine what that world would Do you think you would see reports like that? If men had the self-control over their own vestigial uh, base instincts, that, that, this would not be an issue. Now, once again, I want to stress that men going their own way, Tao, is not, I mean, it's certainly not a, a prescription for chastity. But one thing that Barbarossa said once that had forever left an impression on my mind, something I, that had run actually concurrently to things I was thinking at the time and, and things I think to this day is, 
the ability to go indefinitely without sex, not to renounce it entirely, but the ability to say at a whim or if at, a, at any given moment, say, I don't need this. That is true mastery of the self, and that is mastery of your instincts. These men, unfortunately, and I have to chastise these foreign men to some extent, they're, they're so, they, some of them literally go to South Korea because of the Korean women. Yes, they're very beautiful and, and what have you, but they go there not just because of the coin, which would be my primary reason, but because of, uh, because of the females. They're more attractive, they're thinner, and I mean, the, the level of dependency and addiction, uh, pussy addiction, is really beyond, uh, beyond comprehension. Uh, you know, and I, I actually got off the, the Skype conversation with a friend just a little while ago, who I would describe as a mild pussy addict, and he came up with all kinds of excuses trying to justify why he, in fact, is not. He claims that it's much more accessible for him than other females, and so on and so forth. And yet he still spends time and occasionally money engaging them. So my argument there would simply be, well, I mean, look, I'm not going to fault him. Most men are addicted to pussy. It's just you know, the state of the world. But if men could control themselves uh, and would, would not be so uh, on both sides of the aisle, the, the, the Anglo-Saxon men going to uh, South Korea and the Korean men, I mean, what are they fighting over? I really don't see it. Uh, well, I know what they're fighting over, but it's not something worthy of being fought over. That's my point. Anyway, I don't want to make this too long. But yes, this is clearly uh, not about xenophobia, uh, not racism. It, it's clearly about a kind of intermale competition for the attention of females. The report says it all. Now, if I could get my hands on more information regarding this, which I might try to do, there might be some other things I could add. But uh, for the time being, this is what I'm working with. And also based on my observations when I did live in South Korea, and this is, uh, this is what I uh, think is uh, an accurate description of what's going on. And I hope this gentleman allows a response. Uh, if not, then eh, so be it. Uh, and thanks for watching.